The Xbox, a plucky little underdog that managed to overcome the odds and muscle its way into the major console scene. And all it took was a bit of elbow grease, a can-do attitude, and multiple billions of dollars from one of the richest tech conglomerates in the world. A classic feel-good story! Yeah, alright, so despite the not-so-humble origins, it was still a monumental achievement for Microsoft to break into a hyper-competitive market, and if we're being honest, it's hard to qualify any console manufacturer as a plucky underdog anymore. Apart from maybe this one. The launch of the original Xbox back in 2001 wasn't the first time a corporate giant stepped into the ring, and it won't be the last either. Even if Google says they don't have a console, don't lie to us, Google, you're hiding those mutant PC console hybrids somewhere. Almost 20 years on, Microsoft has been through enough to thoroughly earn their console credentials. A rocky start, a breakout hit, software domination, hardware failures, PR disasters, exclusive game droughts. They They've seen it all. And since Microsoft's number four is on its way, we think it's high time we looked back through the Redmond-based firm's now well-established history to pick out a few interesting snippets to share with you all. Shall we look at some? I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 things you didn't know about Xbox. Number 10. Gears of War led to a more powerful Xbox 360. The dwindling number of Xbox exclusives has been rough for Xbox fans over recent years, especially when they gaze over the fence at Sony's prized crop of robot dinosaurs, mythical monsters, and man-spiders. But things weren't always like this. The Xbox 360's launch in 2005 ushered in an era of excellent console exclusives and early releases. The likes of Halo, Oblivion, Dead Rising, Crackdown, Left 4 Dead, Fable 2, Mass Effect, and Forza, just to name a few. And naturally, there was Gears of War. This chainsaw revving testosterone fest not only forever changed our perspective of chest high walls, but also influenced the console's hardware development itself. You see, the Xbox 360 was initially set to have 256 megabytes of RAM before Epic Games pushed Microsoft to double up to 512 MB by showing them comparisons of their upcoming Gears game running on both specs. Apparently, Microsoft's chief financial officer later called Epic to say, you guys just cost me one billion dollars, to which Epic's Mark Rain replied with, no, we just did one billion gamers a favor, which uh, I think implies that the additional RAM is one dollar per gamer, per console? I don't think that's right, Mark. I don't think that's it at all. Number nine. It's all in the name. Thinking up a great name can be trickier than you think. Just ask the Wii U, the Xbox One X, or the Turbo Graphics. It's a fine line between having the coolest name on the playground and being relentlessly bullied for having a name that sounds like urine. Damn, kids are cruel. For Microsoft, the naming process was a long and arduous one, with around 35 names considered when designing their original bulky box. Amongst the ones tested with focus groups were Face, Full Action Center, Mind, Microsoft Interactive Network Device, R&R, &R, Reality and Revolution, MTG, Microsoft Total Gaming, E2, Extreme Experience, not to be confused with E3, O2, Optimal Ozone, or Optical Odyssey, not to be confused with Oxygen, and AIO, all in one, not to be confused with System of a Down's friendly love ballad, I-E-A-I-A-I-O. The name they almost went with was 11X, before one of the lead designers, Seamus Blackley, had a moment of clarity amongst the madness and suggested it simply be called the Xbox. You know, after DirectX, the API they've been working with all this time. Number 8. So many cancelled Rare games. Amongst the impressive collection of early Microsoft exclusives, there was one high-profile absence. In 2002, Microsoft snapped up Rare, the former Nintendo heavyweights, for a whopping $375 million, leaving many of us stunned and waiting eagerly for the next big hit to rival their incredible back catalogue. But as we now know, grabbed by the ghoulies was hardly vintage Rare, and despite the promise of that sweet micro-cash dollar, almost 20 games proposed by Rare 
were canned as they spiralled towards Connect Game Purgatory. There was a sequel to 360 launch title Cameo, a couple of MMO titles, horror games by the name of Ordinary Joe and Urchin, and even racers like Banjo Karting and Banjo Kazooie. What a name! But the biggest crime befell Perfect Dark, which, after the character assassination that was Zero, had two much grittier sequels planned called Perfect Dark Core and Perfect Dark Vengeance. The two-part saga would have included an older, colder Joanna Dark, betrayals from old friends like Elvis the Alien, time travel that revealed Saturn's moon Titan to be a version of Earth sent back to the past, and a main bad guy or girl who was actually Joanna from the future. Come on, Microsoft, how could you not have greenlit this? Number 7. Kinect's Forgotten Forefather. The Kinect has proved to be good value over the years, not necessarily for the people who actually purchased one mind, but certainly for the amount of ridiculous E3 demos and showcases that have provided plenty of food for the snark sharks and cringe merchants. You ever wonder what the bottom of an Avatar shoe looks like? Well, bam! There it is. Amazingly, the Kinect, first unveiled as Project Natal in 2009, was once the fastest selling consumer electronics device ever, with more than 10 million systems sold in the first six months alone. That's 133,000 a day, which is more than the iPhone 4, iPad, or the Nintendo Wii. I suppose we underestimated the power of a Kinect enabled Pizza Hut app. But this arm flailing enabler wasn't Microsoft's first motion sensor rodeo. No, that honor goes to the ill fated Xbox Live Vision camera for the 360, which provided an extra gimmick for most compatible games, and notoriously for people getting a bit too familiar in a friendly game of Uno. There were, however, two games custom made for the peripheral. Anyone who bought the device got a free copy of Totem Ball, a buggy, unresponsive puzzle platformer, and the other game? A niche title called You're In The Movies. No big deal, only the greatest video game in the world that lets you become a cinema sensation. Look how much fun we're having. Number 6. Microsoft Lost $4 Billion On The Xbox as we mentioned earlier, it's not easy breaking into a competitive console market, and rather predictably, Microsoft had to fight through some major losses on their first console in 2001. While Bill Gates' endless vaults of Windows money erased the pain somewhat, it's still been estimated that the Xbox brand lost them $4 billion between 2001 and 2005. Part of this was due to the PS2's dominance of market share, but production costs were also a factor. Each Xbox cost $425 to make, but were sold for $299 each, meaning a loss of $125 per console. But the idea of hardware acting as a loss leader isn't new, however. In fact, most consoles operate like this, with software and additional services bringing in the profit and covering the previous costs. The 360 actually became profitable after a while, but for hardware, this is the exception rather than the rule. For the original Xbox, the challenges of being new to the game could have been even more costly, though. An early design prototype was literally an X-shaped box before the form factor was scrapped for being too impractical and unwieldy to work with. Number 5. Overseas difficulties. If you thought just getting your console to market was tricky, introducing it to a Japanese audience is another headache entirely. Microsoft found this out the hard way with their Xbox. Firstly, they were told they had to change the colour of the console, as black was associated with death in Japan, which is fair, but the equally noir shaded PS2 had no such restrictions in place. The name Xbox apparently also had similar connotations for an Eastern market. And on top of this, a speech by Bill Gates at the 2001 Tokyo Game Show left the audience less than impressed after coming across a bit too sales pitch. The controller needed a rework too, as the massive slab of plastic called Duke was deemed too big for regular human hands in Japan. Japan, or indeed most other countries for that matter, as it became a worldwide standard in 2002. Microsoft even claimed sabotage at one point. A rumour circulated that the disk drive would slightly scratch the disks as it ran, but Xbox co-creator Seamus Blackley knew the extensive work put into the design of the console, and so began to suspect foul play from overseas manufacturers. Number 4. Sonic almost launched the Xbox. Early console development is so fickle, it's a miracle we're not in some bizarre Twilight Zone reality playing Super Crash Bros on our Sega 3DS. But in this case, 
it was all down to timing. The fall of one giant, Sega, just so happened to coincide with the rise of another, Microsoft, and one William Gates, having previously stated his respect for Sega, was keen to bring them on board. Another high-profile, almost exclusive, was Resident Evil 4, falling through essentially because of translation issues. Both sides believed that gaming was more than just entertainment, but Resi creator Shinji Mikami walked out of a meeting when Xbox reps failed to convince him of their shared philosophy. As for Halo, a franchise so Microsoft that Cortana is literally installed on most Windows devices, Bungie almost went with Apple before Microsoft acquired them. Back to Sonic now, and despite how close a deal came to being struck, it wasn't yet 2006, and Sonic's stock was still quite high, rendering a deal impossible. They ultimately decided to do things their own way instead, but that didn't stop a deal announcing 11 Sega titles for the console. Number 3. Last Spartan Standing with their revolutionary Xbox Live service, Microsoft changed the face of online gaming for consoles, following in the footsteps of Sega and Nintendo and bringing it into the mainstream for the first time. That's no mean feat for a new contender, and thanks in large part to Halo 2's excellent online multiplayer. But when the live servers for the original Xbox were finally due to shut down on the 15th of April 2010, some dedicated fans realised they could continue playing Halo if they simply didn't switch off their consoles. Amazingly, the matchmaking continued to work, so a group of players stubbornly kept the party going, only dropping out due to real-life technical difficulties like power failures, electrical storms, home remodelling, or or stupidly logging in to a different console. The last Spartan standing was a player called Apache Nasir, who survived until May the 10th, almost a month after official shutdown before being unceremoniously booted from the game. Their commitment was not in vain, however, as many, including Apache, received access to the Halo Reach beta and a spot in the history books. Number 2. Xbox could have partnered with Sony and Sega. We're back in the twilight zone of maybes, almosts, and what could have beens now, with part two of Microsoft Tries to Buy Out Everyone. Reminiscent of how the Nintendo PlayStation was so nearly a thing before the two became bitter rivals, Nintendo, Sony's PS2 almost had a very Microsoft theme. At some point before the PS2 was revealed in 1999, Bill Gates approached Sony CEO Nobuyuki Idei, wanting Sony to use Microsoft's programming tools in their next console. But when Idei turned down the offer, Gates apparently took it very personally, and so dedicated time and resources to Microsoft's own console contender. The thought of a deal was probably a long shot anyway, given how both companies felt about each other. Microsoft were worried about the threat to PC gaming, and Sony was wary about how adopting Microsoft architecture would limit their own freedom. Sega, on the other hand, was held in deep respect by Microsoft, with Gates seeing them as pioneers. Along with the attempt to bring Sonic into the fold, Xbox could have supported Dreamcast titles, and even integrated SegaNet into their developing Xbox Live system. But this deal proved impossible for Sega chairman Isao Okawa. Number 1. The Billion Dollar Red Ring of Death Warning. The following may contain images of peril, despair, and OH GOD WHY- The Red Ring of Death. The Reaper of Consoles, the Destroyer of Childhoods. Call it what you want, these three infamous red lights, not a full ring, technically, struck fear in the hearts of 360 owners everywhere. In the first four years, the Xbox 360 had a 23.7% failure rate, almost a quarter of all consoles in one of the biggest PR whoopsies in the industry's history. It would have killed lesser companies, but luckily Microsoft still had Mr. Gates's endless vaults of cash money. After the scale of the issue became clear, Microsoft increased the warranty from one to three years, and offered a free fix for customers who otherwise would have had to resort to wrapping their console in towels, buying it vegetables, or performing a pagan incantation while hopping on one leg and wearing a Master Chief helmet, you know, the usual stuff. The whole fiasco, caused by overheating components in a tightly packed box, cost Microsoft more than a billion dollars. And while it's easy with hindsight to say it never should have happened, at least it's reassuring to see a company take such a huge loss to fix their mistakes, with Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer approving the costs without hesitation. Sometimes companies really are sorry. Okay. And that's our list. Like a red-ringed 360, we've reached the end, but we're still curious to hear any of your favourite stories about the Microsoft juggernaut. Let us know in the comments below. 
You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.